Hey everyone, Jamie here from TechnicalCafe.com. Welcome to your second CSS tutorial. In the last tutorial, we basically went over what CSS was and how we can go about using it to change uh, the look of our HTML web pages and alter things and stuff like that. So in this tutorial, we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to learn about selecting certain elements using CSS. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this web page that we have in front of us here. Uh, it's a basic uh, HTML web page. We have a, a header one tag here, which is just says CSS Tutorial 2. Um, we have a paragraph here and a hyperlink here using the anchor tag. So if we come into our code, you notice that this is what it is. It looks just like a pretty standard HTML web page, other than the fact that we've included the style sheet here uh, using the link uh, element. But we're going to get into that later in a couple tutorials. Um, this tutorial is just going to focus on writing the actual CSS code. So, uh, so what we want to do is we want to learn how to select uh, various elements in CSS. And there are ways to select individual elements and uh, stuff like that. But in this tutorial, we're going to focus more ma mainly on how to select all the elements of a specific type within an HTML web page. So right here we have a uh, one header one tag, uh, one paragraph tag, and one hyperlink tag. So let's say we wanted to modify uh, the header tag up here, the CSS tutorial 2 text. So we, let's say we want to change this to um, uh, blue. So we come over here to our CSS, our styles.css uh, code, which is completely blank and there's nothing here that's actually changing anything on this web page. So what we want to do if we want to select the uh, header one tag is we're going to enter in a selector. And the selector just tells the, the browser essentially what is being selected or what's going to be changed. So in order to select the h1 tag, all I need to do is enter in h1. And if you notice here in our CSS, it highlights in blue. Um, so we don't need to enter in the tags or anything like h1, just, uh, just the name of the element. And then we're going to open up a code block using a set of curly braces. And uh, what the curly braces do is essentially specifies anything within these curly braces is going to be edited about the h1. So if we type something out here, uh, it will not affect what's going to happen to the h1 tag. So let's say we wanted to make it blue. Um, in order to change the color of an uh, element or something like that, all you need to do is type in color, and we're going to say blue. And here is, um, this is just a, a creating a rule for the color. Um, so all you need to do is enter in what you want to change here. So we said color, and then a colon, and then whatever comes after this colon is going to be what we're changing. So we're going to say blue. So if we save this, we come over to our web page and we refresh, you notice that it changes the header to blue. And there's other things you can do with this, but we'll learn more about those in the uh, subsequent tutorials. But let's go ahead and try changing our paragraph here. And one other thing, you'll notice that the changing the h1 tag does not affect any other elements that we have within our page. So uh, let's go ahead to change our paragraph. So our paragraph right here uh, says, welcome to your second CSS tutorial. And it has um, uh, one paragraph tag. So let's go over here. And in order to select the paragraph tag, similar to, similarly to how we selected our h1 tag, all we're going to do is just use the p. Uh, we're not going to put it in brackets or anything like that. And then right after the p, we're going to open up a code block using our curly brackets uh, and come down a little bit. And right in here, whoop, I'm going to type in color equals red. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to change the color of the paragraph to red. And again, this is going to apply to any other paragraph on the page. So if I add another paragraph, it will also be red. So let's come over here and take a look. You'll notice that now our paragraph has changed to red. So let's say what happens if we add another paragraph. So if we come in here and underneath we say, we are learning CSS, and we save this, come over here to our web page and refresh, this will also be red. Um, because the paragraph selector that we're using here selects every paragraph within a web page uh, or any paragraph that the CSS page is actually included in. So uh, this is basically how we can go about selecting different elements within our web page. Uh, so let's say we want to select our link here. This is the only thing we haven't changed. Um, it's a visited hyperlink, so it's, it's purple instead of blue if it, was our, if it were active. Let's say we want to change the hyperlink, whether or not it's visited or not, to, um, to black without the underline here. So we're going to do, similarly to how we selected h1 and p, we're just going to say a for our anchor tag, which is how we selected our hyperlink. So we're going to say a, and then we're going to come up here within our code block. And remember, anything we type up here or down here is not going to affect the uh, the look of our hyperlink. It's actually, the browser is going to actually think it's an element that we're trying to select because uh, it highlights blue, if you'll notice there. So if we say a, and we say, let's say color, and then colon, and black, and if you'll notice in here we have semicolons after every single rule that we're creating, or after every attribute that we're trying to change, and these semicolons are essentially ending it, so uh, it'll end what we're changing in our color, and then we can go on to another thing, such as text decoration, 
or something like that, and then would end that with a semicolon as well. So uh, the main thing to remember here is that we have our, our element that we want to change, or our selector, and our, our attributes and whatever we're changing goes in here uh, within the code block that we create. So uh, with our link here, let's save this, come over here and refresh. We change the color to black. Now what we want to do is uh, we want to remove the underline. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to come over here and we're going to add another rule to our CSS um, attribute that we have here. And we're going to say text decoration. And if you'll notice, since it's a valid uh, valid rule that we're creating, a valid attribute that we can change, it'll change to a kind of like a lightish blue, almost purplish color. Uh, whereas if we selected something that isn't accurate, uh, it won't. So we'll say over here, put our, col our semicolon, and then we'll say uh, none. And this, what none means is it's actually going to delete this, uh, or rather not show this line here, um, just because it's deleting all decoration from the text. It's just going to leave plain text. So if we come over here, save this, and come over here and refresh, you'll notice that our link here looks just like regular black text, other than the fact that when you hover over it, you get a, um, you get a pointer here that allows us to go to google.com. So this is basically how you go about selecting elements within CSS, and uh, there's if you add another link to the web page, it'll also be black. So if we come over here um, and we say ahref equals, and we'll say yahoo.com, and then we say yahoo, and we save it here. And we'll actually add a line break just so we know what's going on. This will also appear the same exact way. So every element selector that we edit is going to update every element of that type within an HTML web page. So just something to remember. If you want to change the look of every element within a web page or any page that you have your H a CSS code going on to, uh, this is great for changing. Let's say you want every link to look like this right here. Uh, this is great for doing that. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about selecting things by ID so we can work on specific elements. Uh, for example, say if we wanted to only change this link to Google and leave the Yahoo link a different color or uh, original, what it was originally, we can do that using ID selectors. So if you like this uh, tutorial series, please feel free to subscribe, rate, comment. Um, and if you have any questions, also feel free to leave a comment below. Or you can send an email using the Technical Cafe contact page. Um, and also you can contact us on Twitter. Twitter.com slash JamieMCG is what my Twitter is. And Twitter.com slash Technical Cafe is the Technical Cafe Twitter. Uh, either one works. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.